So hello everybody, welcome into my acrylic painting tutorial. I'm Erin, nice to see everybody. Uh, for those who have never joined me before, uh, I'll explain how this is all gonna work. Essentially, I'll be teaching you step by step how to paint the painting that you can see to my, still don't, still not used to it, to my right here. Uh, it's a nice Lord of the Rings inspired painting, hopefully for those who have seen the movie or have read the books or just understand anything about the lore. Hopefully you understand this is from a little hobbit hole. It's kind of the perspective of inside looking out. That's our little friend Gandalf there riding in on his little horse and buggy. Um, so that was just the whole vibe. I just wanted to do a nice little Lord of the Rings inspired painting. Uh, for those who don't know, me and my community uh, watched Lord of the Rings a couple weekends ago, like all day on a Saturday. We watched number one, two, and three um, direct cut so it was uh 16 no 13 hours of movie watching yeah so <laughs> we were all very hype about lord of the rings we wanted a uh design created from it so that's what i did just a nice little uh hobbit's perspective here uh so essentially yeah, i'll be teaching you step by step so you'll actually see my painting here as well my live painting this is the original but i'm going to replace this with a blank canvas and actually paint along with you so you can see both the original above me as well as yeah this uh, blank canvas here which i'll paint along with you on and uh, yeah, that way we can do it all together and all end up with some beautiful paintings by the end of the evening. If you're here just to watch, that's totally fine. I thank you for being here. Um, I say it all the time, but I'll keep reminding and saying it. Um, it really helps me for people to be watching me as I'm live. Uh, Twitch uh, recommends channels with higher viewership. So the higher viewership I have, the more, the higher chances are other people can find me, other people can support me. I can continue growing on this platform. So even if you're not painting and you just wanted to like hang out and chat and just like, even and just watch me in the background. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Um, yeah, so yeah, just feel free to hang out no matter what you're doing this evening. Even if you're not as interested in the painting, you just wanna have a nice chat with some people. That's what we're here for too. So it's all good, it's all good. Uh, yeah, supplies can be uh, listed in the chat here. Supplies, there we go. So if you need to review your supplies, they are all right there. But I use five different paint colors. I use red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. I keep that consistent for every single tutorial, just in case anyone's wondering. Uh, I use three different paint brushes. They're always the same three. If I have my third one, where did it go? Oh no, it's okay. I have a large, medium, and small one. This is not my usual small one, but I'll just show it for demonstration. I have a large, flat, medium, round, and a small round. Uh, any combination of those is fine. Uh, other things I'd recommend having include a cup of water, an apron, or just wearing something that you don't mind getting paint on. Uh, thank you again, Terry, for the apron as always. Uh, and a paint palette. I, uh, I have my volcano plate as usual. Still not quite the volcano it used to be, but he's growing, he's growing. And then, uh, yeah, just as a reminder, other places to find me, you can check me out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. For those who are wanting to paint this at a separate time, at a later time, I will be posting this to YouTube as I do all of my step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials. Uh, Instagram, you can find me at instagram.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. That's where you can see all of my past designs as well as personal artwork and bullet journaling and all the little crafty things that I do. And then on Facebook, uh, that's where you can find kind of upcoming tutorial events. If you like to RSVP to things to have Facebook remind you, I'd recommend checking that out. Thank you, Gray. All the links are right there. Facebook.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. It's the same name on every platform. I don't know why I keep repeating it, but just to really <laughs> send it home, uh, all of the links are there. Thank you, Gray, again for posting. Uh, yeah, that's all for the little intro. So I'll catch up on comments real quick and then we'll do our toast. We always do a little toast to begin and then we can start painting. All right. So for this painting here, I guess I'll bring this up to talk about it here. Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the landscape area first. Uh, and with acrylic paints, for those who are kind of new to acrylic paints, you can easily stack color on top of color. So I'm just kind of going to do the whole landscape as if I'm just doing it, you know, nice and wide. We're not too worried about the circle. We can kind of look at the circle as we go along and kind of keep things a little bit shorter up top and longer as they come to the middle. Uh, but in the end, if anything's a little bit messy, if you have some streaks going outside of the circle, it's truly not a big deal. So I'll just kind of be swiping back and forth very... Uh, yeah, very roughly, very messily, and then I'll use the brown and this beige to kind of clean it up later. So for now, we're pretending we're not really inside. We're just going to paint the outside is what we're going to do. So I would grab your largest brush, brush the uh, large flat brush. 
I would dip that in your water if you haven't already, and I would mix together some white and blue, just a little bit of blue. I'm gonna keep my blue very, very light. You can see in my original here, I just kept a nice sky blue. So lots of white with just a little bit of your blue. Oh yeah, no worries, Lori. I do that all the time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Mixing up all the chats and stuff, it's all good. Miriam, thank you for the follow and welcome in. If you're here to paint and you have any questions, just let me know. Look at your menu, good. Oh, thank you, Magic, thank you. All good. Okay, good, I'm glad, canine. So again, I know it's a little scary to guess. If you'd like, you could definitely paint a quick little circle or I guess a quick big circle it is quite a big circle. But again, in the end, I'm just kind of roughly, you know, imagining where it's going. So my streaks are gonna be a little bit shorter up top. They're gonna look getting a little bit wider as I go, creating a relatively round shape as I go. So just back and forth, left and right with this light blue color. And if anything, go a little bit wider than you think. If you're worried about, again, going outside of the circle lines, just go a little bit more. It's okay. I wouldn't worry about going outside the lines. I think it's better to do that versus going too far in and then you're left with gaps. So if anything, go a little bit more than you think. Vonda, you did it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Vonda treated me to a pizza time controversial. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. This is the second time I've fed today. Thank you very, very much, Vonda. I appreciate it. Controversial pizza time. We had one of those last week. Pineapple on pizza, controversial. Thank you so much, Vonda. I appreciate it. I'm really going to enjoy that after the stream. Thank you. So I'm still adding that blue coming down. So still going left and right. And I'm going to stop about here. I'm maybe about a quarter of the way down. Not, not too far. One, two, yeah, about a quarter of the way. So just light blue back and forth so far. Mm-hmm. What colors? Oh, there they are. Thank you very much, Poppy, Chuck. Uh, so they were red, yellow, phthalo blue, black and white. If you're asking what colors here, that was just white and phthalo blue. Lots of white, little bit of phthalo blue. Hype, thank you so much again, Vana. Pineapple is best be. I'm honestly really looking forward to it. <laughs> KR Cat says they wouldn't add catnip. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll have a talk with Pizza Pizza. Thank you. <laughs> this is it. Nice to see you. Welcome in. Agreed. Not so controversial after all. <laughs> Got it. No, you're fine, Chuck. All good. Yeah, welcome in. How's your Friday going? This is it. Slash pizza in Discord. What do you know? What do you know? Someone just ordered me a pizza. You're coming to my door, apparently. <laughs> welcome in. And Apple's awesome, not kids, I assume is awesome on pizza. I agree. I'm becoming more of a fan of it. The more I have it, the more I'm like, I actually really love this and will probably order it with pineapple myself. <laughs> what are pineapple kids? <laughs> I assume it's a typo, but yeah, also what are pineapple kids? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Eating the baby pineapples? <laughs> no. All right, so now that we have our blue here, everyone, I'm just going to blend it down into a lighter blue slash white. You can see it just comes a little bit softer before we hit the greenery here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna use that same brush, the large flat brush. I washed it off and I'm just grabbing plain white paint. I'm grabbing plain white paint because what's going to happen is I'm gonna blend it into the blue and it's going to mix a little with the blue and then create a nice, very, very light blue. So I'm just gonna start with my plain white I'm going to start by blending it, so I'm just wiping left and right back and forth along that bottom edge. And you can see what happened is it grabbed a little bit of blue, kind of mixed in, and now I'm just going to bring it down a little bit more. So it creates a nice transition from a kind of, uh, yeah, sky blue into a super, super light blue. Same thing, just making sure I'm going nice and wide. I'm making sure I'm, yeah, really keeping with that circle here. I can always cut it off, so I'm not worried. Grabbing a little more white, just gonna keep blending down a little bit more. I'm maybe about a third of the way down now, roughly, roughly. But yeah, blending is just, again, using that wet paint color into the old paint color, going back, forth, back, forth, and that creates a nice smooth transition all the way down. So we got a nice, yeah, sky blue down to a light blue now. Just give you a minute or two for that. I love pepperoni and tomatoes with your, really? That's quite the combo, Vonda. 
Interesting. Picturing small pineapple people previously undiscovered, somehow they ended up on Dad's Pizza? Question mark? <laughs> Court, nice to see you again. Best pizza yields fruit and fungi? <laughs> Gotta get that pineapple mushroom. Really? Oh my goodness. These are some hot takes. I don't know. I feel like we've talked about pineapple on pizza an endless number of times, and somehow we're getting all these... Yeah, bigger combinations. Fruit and fungi. I like that a lot, Court. I like just that that title. <laughs> Fruit and fungi. Thank you. Hate predictive text. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Now that would be controversial. <laughs> I think a six cheese pizza is actually king. Too many toppings aren't my thing to each their own pizza. Yeah, Poppy, I was, I was talking to someone about this recently. I feel like I never order extra cheese on things despite the fact that I love cheese. I should just get a really extra cheesy pizza one day. I'd probably love it. Yeah. I don't know why, it just seems like whenever I get toppings, I'm like, no, I gotta use it on a different topping, but cheese is definitely a topping, an extra topping. <laughs> Stirring the pot. <laughs> so far, so good. Good. Happy to be here as always. Yeah, haven't had a chance in the past little while. Friday night tutorials are nice. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. All good. I know we all have our stuff going on right now. Pizza slash this is it. So it's okay. It's okay. I'm glad you're here too. Yeah, Friday nights are always good. Exactly. Can't stand olives or mushrooms. I like both, just not really on my pizza. I like mushrooms, but not olives on my pizza. Had Hawaiian pizza, both pineapple and mandarin. Really? Oranges? You guys are getting crazy with your toppings. Someone mentioned banana at one point. Love pineapple mushroom, never realized it was popular. Yeah, no. That's interesting. So pizza, pizza themselves, those pineapple mushroom. There you go. Yeah, never heard of oranges either. Do it extra cheese, double cheese. Yeah, yeah, I should, Poppy. Next time I order myself a pizza, I'm just gonna go all cheese. All the cheeses, thank you. I have three toppings, make them all cheese. Oh, I'm sure they do, or at least on half. Yeah, yeah, they do halves. Yeah, mandarin's a new one, I agree. Oh, that a rush trip to the hospital, are you allergic? Banana's quite common here. Yeah, that Groke, it was either you or Busky that was talking about banana pizza. Chicken and curry, but never oranges. Yeah, it's a new one for me, oranges. Hmm, interesting. All right, so I've got my sky on, so I'm just gonna move down into the uh, kind of green grass area here. So I've got a couple layers. I've got one, two, three, and four. Uh, and I kind of separate the layers by color, first of all. So I've got a very lime green, it gets a little darker. It's uh, more of like a Kelly green and then more of like a mossy green down here. So just transitioning down. And then I do a few different things to them. Uh, let me zoom you in to see. Cause I, you can see that these, the first two layers look a little similar, but the second one actually has kind of like, almost like wheat or tall grass on it. Third one just has some little dollops of yellow flowers or dandelions. That's what I was imagining. And fourth one's just kind of back to normal. I did a little bit of stippling with maybe a darker green, but that's about it. First one is quite normal as well. So yeah, that's what those four look like. And we'll just add them one at a time. So I'm just gonna keep using the large flat brush. I'd recommend washing it off if you haven't already. And I'm going to mix our lightest green. So the lightest green is just lots of yellow with a little bit of blue. You'll get a nice lime green out of that. Lots of yellow, little bit of blue. If you even wanna try throwing some white in there, you can. I personally like using yellow though. I think it makes it a little bit kind of limey or brighter, if that makes sense. The white almost like tones it down in a way. Makes it more like minty, if that makes sense. So I would recommend trying to use lots of yellow with just a tiny bit of blue in order to keep it nice and light. You have chicken olives and pineapple. Wow, you guys have interesting combos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, Groki, for sure. I need pizza tour to follow your tour. Whatever you want, whatever you want. Pizza two or next. Oh, interesting magic. Pizza bus behind the bun bus followed by potato bus. Delicious. <laughs> the most delicious scene there ever was. All right, so I've got my uh, light green. I'm just applying it, you can see, just right across the canvas here. I'm trying not to leave any gaps from the sky and the green. So I'm just kind of going a little on top of that light blue if I need to. And you can see I'm also giving a little wave. So I'm just kind of going up, down, up, down, making it a little little hilly, some nice rolling hills. And then I'm gonna bring that green just down a little bit. So I'm just kind of sweeping across, sweeping across. And if you're worried about how low to go, go a little bit lower than you think. Again, it's uh, acrylic paint, it's very easy to stack on top of one layer, uh, of each layer, I should say. So if you're nervous about how far down, just go down a little further. You can always stack the next layer on top if you need to. Way easier to do that rather than leave a gap and then be like, what do I do with the gap? So 
There you go. Oh, that's a little yellow there. I'm gonna cover that a bit. Cool. So yeah, you can see I brought it down about halfway, even though the second layer will probably go around here. So yeah, you know. There we are. Give you a minute or two if you're still adding that, and then we'll just go to the next layer after. Potato bus. <laughs> Severe allergic. Oh no, to mushrooms, I gotcha. Have an ice cream truck cause the caboose. Yeah, we need a little dessert truck. Ice cream would be good. Ice cream is always a good option. Yeah, you can see just if you want to keep smoothing it out, that just helps keep everything nice and even. Sometimes, especially with lighter colors, it can look a little streaky. So I just kind of lightly brush back and forth, trying my best to kind of blend all those streaks together, not leaving any ridges. So I'm not using any extra paint. I'm just kind of moving the paint around to help it uh, yeah, all kind of blend together. But honestly, if there's ridges here and there, I think it just adds more layers to your hills as well. It'll just make it look like there's some extra extra hills, yeah, extra layers, make it a little more three-dimensional. So no worries if you have some, some little ridges here and there. I'm just going to my plate and I'm going to mix a slightly darker green. Not too much darker, just slightly darker. I would say we're still in the light green area. So on my plate, I've just grabbed a tiny bit more blue and I've mixed it right on top of the old color. On the rolled ice creams. Oh yeah. I agree. Like the marble slab and stuff. Mm -hmm. So again, a tiny bit more blue into the existing green. That'll make it a little bit darker. And it's just as simple as adding a second layer. So I'm just doing another hill on top. Again, you can see I've just piled it right on top of the old one. So that way there's no gaps. You can even, again, blend it right on top. It'll start to blend in. And I'll keep bringing it down a little bit more. I would say we're going just below halfway at this point. I was saying as I was creating this live uh, last week, it looks like that uh, classic Windows XP desktop background. <laughs> Someone called it Bliss, I think. Something Bliss. I don't know, but... If you know, you know, okay? If you know, you know. Well, we're on the topic. Hope everyone's week is going as good as their favorite pizza. <laughs> That's so sweet. We stand all variations. That's what's so great about pizza. Your choices are almost like self-expression. Lots of unique combos. I love that. That whole sentiment. Hope your week is going as good as your favorite pizza. <laughs> That's such a statement. That's great. Oh, this is it. That's so sweet. I miss Marble Slab. Do you not have it close to you, Magic? Pizza, whatever your favorite might be for everyone. Oh, I'll take a slice, thank you. Look at all those slices ready to go. Hot and fresh. <laughs> Pass the pizza. <laughs> I love that so much. Your week is just going as good as your favorite pizza. <laughs> My week is going as good as mushrooms, pepperoni, and green pepper, and some onion. <laughs> That feels good, man. It is, yes. I'm trying to learn them all. Still have trouble with a few of those boys. Closer than is London. Oh yeah, that's pretty far for you. Yep, yep. Honestly, a little overhyped. It's it's great for what it is, but it's pretty expensive for what it is as well. Just the concept of mixing some like chopped up chocolate bars into some ice cream. You could do it at home. <laughs> you could do it at home for like half the cost. All right, whenever you got your second layer on, I'm just going to do a third layer. So now I'm mixing even more blue into my existing green. I would say this is more of a classic medium green at this point, like a nice grass green. I'm saving the darkest green for last. So this is the third green we're using, just a more, yeah, normal grass green is what I would say. So this is, um, this is the layer that Gandalf is kind of hiding behind. So I kept it just a little more flat. So if you want to do that too, you can make it a little bumpy here and there, but just so we can kind of see everything that's going on, his little hat and his uh, little horse and all that. I'm going to keep it relatively flat compared to the other layers. Maybe it dips up a little at the top, but yeah. Same thing, I'm just going to bring that down further. Now I'm going to bring that down nice and far because we only have one layer left and we want to make sure we're covering the whole bottom, especially because the circle's coming in like this. So definitely that bottom middle, right? 
So just be conscious of that. And yeah, again, you can plan ahead. Like if you know where your next hill is going to be, like I know mine's gonna kind of dip down and then up. Like I don't have to fill in all of this, right? I'm just gonna keep it just to save paint. Keep it a little more into the shape of the next hill, right? There we go. Still again, nice and wide so we can kind of cut that off later. This is a nice look just in general, huh? With just kind of the brushed kind of soft edges. I really like that actually. I might do that for a different painting. Just a little more messy. Just frames it very cool. Wow. All right, so that's layer number three. So I'm just giving a quick minute. Yeah, thanks. This is it. Honestly, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really liking that. It's just accidental, but yeah, because we'll be fixing that up later, obviously, to make it more circular. But it's uh, it, it yeah, it looks like you've kind of swiped it on all at once with one brush in a way, or like one big brush just, goes, you know, it's very like Bob Ross at the start of the Joy of Painting when he's like do 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 yeah, and he goes back and forth at the start. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and I know some people actually put like a border on and then peel it off. Bob has done that before I've seen where he does like an oval border with just a big uh, kind of like vinyl sticky. And then he paints, 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 and then he rips it all off. Oh, that's so satisfying to watch. So nice. Uh, I'm gonna grab a little more yellow. Yeah, for those interested, I'll shout that out tomorrow. I'm going to actually follow along live to a Bob Ross tutorial for the first time. So if anyone wants to watch that or follow along with me, I'm doing that tomorrow starting at 11 here on Twitch. So feel free to check that out tomorrow. I'm very excited about it. Because again, I've, I've watched Bob Ross like all my life and I've never followed along to a tutorial. So that's going to be tomorrow for the first time. It's the first time for everything. I chose one specifically with a mountain, so I'll use a uh, a nice palette knife, you know? Gotta use a palette knife like Bob does. So nice to see the peeling. Oh yeah, and the crisp, exactly, the crisp edge is beautiful. Add catnip to the painting, <laughs> Mr. KR Cat. I can't do that right now. <laughs> Maybe at the end. How would I add catnip? <laughs> Paint peeling ASMR, yeah, the sound of painting. <laughs> It's the sound of painting. Welcome in. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm just mixing my last color. So last color is, of course, a dark green. So once again, just more blue into that green pile. It's a very nice, like, mossy green at this point, I would say. And same as usual, I'm just kind of cutting that across anything I have. You can see at this point, I like to kind of do a nice big um, dip. So I kind of go from the bottom and work my way up. Again, just covering however you want. And again, you can just swipe back and forth, left and right. Oops, I want to keep that nice and crisp there. There we go. Uh, yeah, and on the bottom here, like we don't need to go all the way across, right? Because it's circular. So I'm just making sure I'm hitting very close, if not all the way to the bottom in the middle. And then you can kind of start to get a little bit wider as you go out. Again, better safe than sorry. So if you're nervous, I would just bring it a little further than you think. You can always cover it later. We'll actually be doing that next. We'll be using some white to kind of map out the circle and then that way we can let it dry and have a couple coats to make sure we're getting a nice uh, opaque layer. There we go. So something like that. Again, you can kind of see a circle all the way around. I'll just leave another minute for that and then we'll start to chop up our circle a little bit more. Do, 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 do something like that just for a Yeah, pulling stuff up. Oh, yeah. First time in forever. Yeah, exactly. Hope, welcome in. Hello. What time is the Bob Ross paint along? At 11 a.m. EST. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I'll be um, I'll be online by 11 a.m. Um, I will try and keep chatting to a minimum at the start. I know I usually like to chat for a good like half hour to hour at the start, but I'm going to try my best to kind of jump right into it. I'll say a quick few hellos and then we'll get started all together and keep chatting. So 11 a.m. 
Uh, Kate, will you be painting with him in oils or acrylic? Oh yeah, good question. I will be using acrylic actually. Um, so Bob, for those who don't know, always uses oil paints. I'm going to follow along in acrylic just because that's what I'm more comfortable with. Um, so as I go, I'll be kind of telling everybody what I'm changing. If I'm changing anything, if I'm changing a technique or how to do something, I'll be kind of, you know, telling people what I'm doing. But yeah, it's going to be kind of experimental for me just using acrylics. Good question. Bob, oh, there it is. We don't make mistakes. Just happy accidents. Classic. Catnip on the hill. Found another palette knife earlier in the shape that I had really been needing it for all my previous paintings. Oh no. At least you have it now. Uh, commands. Yeah. Thank you, Gray. Doing some of his catnip now. There they are. Yes, thank you both. You got it. Do what I want. <laughs> You're gonna do it, Hope? Are you gonna do it with me? Oh my gosh. I know quite a few people who have gra grabbed supplies in the past a little bit. You guys probably have more supplies than me ready to go for this, honestly. Um, I even said I was going to try and get a two inch brush. I did not. Um, I found a uh, brush that I used to use to paint walls with, like one of the just more um, angled detail brushes. I guess I'll pull that out, but I did not go shopping <laughs> like I intended to. Um, but yeah, I'll just kind of use what I have. I think, like I said before, I'll use um, maybe some more of my heavy based acrylic. So not my usual, just five colors of these guys. Uh, and then that way I'll have less mixing to do and it'll be a little bit thicker for scraping and all that good stuff. So yeah. So excited, says Marion. Yeah, I remember you posted some photos. I got Liquitex, yeah, Liquitex, heavy body and slow dry and blending gel. Oh, very cool. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. See, I'm not that prepared. Slow drying blending gel. That's a lot. That's going to be so useful, Marion. I think you're going to use that outside of the tutorial as well. So that's a good purchase. Uh, Hope. Yes, I've never done Bob Ross. I think it should be a lot of fun. Oh, so cool. Okay, okay, okay. Wow, wow, wow. I'll see you tomorrow then. That's amazing. I didn't realize so many people were joining in. This is very exciting. I always wanted to do is uh, style an acrylic, but I have no idea how to approach it. I'm super excited. Yay. Yeah, I hope it goes okay, Kate, because I know a lot of what he does is kind of laying down a wet base and then blending a lot. So I don't know. I'm convinced if I just do it quickly, I could probably do it. And he's a speedy guy, so I'll try and be speedy too. I'll definitely be pausing here and there just to chat with you guys and to give ourselves some time. But I'm going to try and honestly go at a pace that I'm comfortable with rather than waiting for everybody. So just take your time. I've, I've linked the video. You can kind of go step by step yourself and watch me as I go. Um, but I think part of the key is going to be me trying to keep it speedy. Um, yeah, or else it's going to be uh, everything will be drying too much. All right, guys, so we have uh, the basic landscape down. We still have some work to put on it, but what I wanna do first is I wanna start carving out the circle so we can start to cover up some edges that we don't wanna see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab white paint on my large flat brush. So if you haven't washed it off, wash off your large flat brush and grab some white paint. Do, do, do. Do. Just keeping an eye on my phone for that pizza. I want to make sure I don't miss it. So yeah, plain white paint for now. I know the um, inside is beige and we'll do that as our second or third coat. But for now, we're just using white to try and cover up what we can just to map out the circle. So uh, my circle is nice and big and I know circles are kind of hard to make, right? It's hard to make a nice round circle. Um, I'll give you a couple little tips to start though. Uh, what I like to do is I like to mark off kind of the uh, top, bottom, and left and right of the circle. At least that way I know how wide and how tall it's going to be. So if you want to look at my reference here, I tried to really maximize the space, right? Because we want to see a nice big round hobbit door. So I went just below the top, just above the bottom. ADD Gaming Inc. Welcome in. Thank you for the follow. So I'm just going to center this on my canvas for now. That'll help me, or on my easel rather. That'll help me see here. So yeah, if you want to mark off like the very middle just on the top here, maybe giving a little bit of a gap. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom, leaving a little bit of a gap. And then same on the edges. You can kind of map out, um, you know, the same amount of, uh, <laughs> amount of length. <laughs> The same distance in, oh my gosh, my words. Yeah, same distance in left and right on the same plane. So you're kind of keeping everything nice and horizontal going about the same amount in. So let's go like, what is that? An inch or two, maybe like here. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers to measure over here. So that was right there. Yeah, and then that way at least you have some little markers. In fact, these might go a little higher. That doesn't look like middle. 
But yeah, at least now you're kind of connecting the sides and you're kind of going around like this, right? You could even, if you want, dot on a little bit more if that helps you, just kind of tap, tap, tap as you're going around. That might help you to kind of connect the dots. It's like you're making a little clock almost, like 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, just roughly. And then that way when you're ready to actually do the circle, you can just kind of, uh, yeah, do some nice quick little curves, kind of coming down like that. Down like that. Around. Around. Now if I could give one suggestion, if you're worried once again about size and things, make it a little bigger than you think. If anything, I chopped that up a little bit too much by accident, but if I had gone nice and big to begin with, that would have saved me that trouble. I would have been able to continue to come in, come in, come in, right? So yeah, if anything, go nice and wide, and then you can always kind of carve it inside a little bit more. So I'm just gonna cover up the outside, see how it's looking, and then I can continue to adjust my circle. And you don't need to make your circle perfect for now, right? Because we're still going to put on that nice brown edge, correct? So if anything right now, I'm really just worried about um, covering up the sides here. So trying to cover up any blue or green that leaked over. See that? I'm just moving that away. Getting rid of it, getting rid of it. And if you see a little bit through, of course that's okay. That's the whole point of this. You can see some green is kind of blending because it's fresh. That's okay. That's the whole point. We're just kind of bringing it down into more of a pastel color. And then that way it'll be easy to cover once that's dry. So yeah, there's lots of green there. I'm not too worried. I'm just gonna bring that up to cover down here. I mean, a nice big green door will go here. Yeah, we've got lots of things we can cover with. Why am I hitting the black? Whoops. There we go. So yeah, again, you're more so concentrating on the outsides right now, rather than getting a nice perfect circle. We're just kind of closing it up a little bit for now. Like that's fine. Again, I don't need to be exact. We're gonna put some brown around the edge anyway, so. As long as I have a general circle, that's what we're looking for there. Yeah, again, I know I'm gonna clean that up. It got a little bit choppy there. I could maybe round out this part a little bit more. Yeah, so I'll just give you some time if you're still working on that a little bit. Again, don't worry if you see a little bit of green, a little bit of like yellow or blue coming around, just leave it as I continue to play with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's best to leave it at that point and then you can put lots of other layers on it. All right, I saw a chat going there. Remember how free the clouds are? They just lay around in the sky all day long. So excited, I got Liquitex heavy body. Oh yes, I read that. And a two inch brush, there we go. Yep, yep, yep. I feel like I have like a, a replacement for the two inch brush, yeah. Run to Dollarama, I've used their two inch. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll walk there. Using what you have and not being strict about you having exact supplies or exact colors, one of your many charms. Oh, thanks, Poppy. <laughs> As I was like, maybe I'll run to the dollar store. <laughs> Gasp, the secret to circles, you can you learn it here first. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, I uh, and yeah, a lot of circles, I just like to go like this a bunch before I do it. I don't know, my, I get my arm in a motion almost. I go, woo, 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 and then when I'm ready, I go, mm, I put it right on the canvas. But yeah, I find getting the motion helps a lot. But yeah, kind of making it into a clock, um, I find helps people. It just, uh, yeah, kind of carves out again, left, right, up, down, and then just dot, 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 dot. Really helps. I just make my circles the size of any plate or cup or bowl, right? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> New knowledge acquired. This has been a good day. <laughs> Don't get dizzy and fall in painting. Whoa. Whoa. The great hover technique. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen me do it before, Poppy. It's uh, whenever I'm doing, even like a small sunshine, I'll go do 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 and then I'll just touch it to the canvas as I'm going, as I feel confident about it, you know? Yeah, the hover technique, I love it. Now the kitchen prank supper, tuna helper, ooh. It's amazing every time, yep. <laughs> You know what's amazing are the people who actually can draw perfect circles. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, I'm thinking of a specific video of the guy on chalkboard and he, he doesn't even prepare himself. He doesn't do like the whole wind up. 
but he does a whole like an arm length of a circle. He goes all the way around and it's like a perfect, just the most perfect circle you've ever seen. Using a uh, chalk on a chalkboard, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Kate, one of my students does that? Man, so I wonder if they like practice that, you know? Or if it's just a gift they're born with. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uses his whole arm length. He goes all the way around, just spins all the... Because I wonder if that helps kind of keeping it straight and just going... But I couldn't do it. That's crazy. <laughs> it's huge. All right. I think that's enough time for that outside. So again, we're going to let that dry. So try not to touch it. Um, I know it's tempting to continue to play with and try and cover up all that messiness. But we're going to leave it for now. And we're going to figure that out a little bit later. Uh, for now, though, we just want to go back to the landscape and play around a little bit. We've got some things to add. Um, so I was talking about how I added some different things to each layer here. We had some little, like, tall grass and stuff. Uh, some little dandelions and some texture down here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to switch brushes. I'll do a medium round brush now. I would do any medium to small brush. That's fine. And I'm mixing together yellow with just a little bit of white. The white is going to help the yellow uh, not be as transparent, it's going to be more opaque. So yellow and white. And I'm only using a little bit of white because I want this to be still a very nice bright yellow. And again, if it's a little transparent, that's actually kind of nice because your nice uh, tall grass slash wheat, you might kind of see a little through it. So it's not supposed to be like very thick sticks of yellow, you know? All right, so I've got medium round here and I'm just working on the second layer. So I'm leaving the first one blank. I'm gonna go to the second one personally. And I'm just using the tip of the brush and flicking upwards. That's all. Flick, 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 flick. Do, 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 do. Very lightly, just kind of going from bottom up, 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 right? Make some noise, it helps you. Do, 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 do. Yep, all over the hill. You can do it in patches if you want. You can do it less than I do, but I really try and cover the whole thing. And that's why this layer ends up looking more like this layer because it kind of lightens it up with these uh, little wheat grasses here. Very cool. I'm glad if I can hit the canvas. Thanks for shouting out wood. You gotta stop that, but I appreciate Never stop. Of course I have to. The noises make all the difference. I agree. Thank you, Grogi. Gets you in a mood. Telling the painting where to go. Yeah, and if you start to go on the other layer by accident there, you don't want it to overlap, right? So you can just kind of rub it away with your finger as you saw me do, or cover it with green later. If you get a little messy, goodbye. Well, hello, woo chat. Hello, woo woo, Todd. How's it going? I like the hoo woo woo. I really like that actually. Any oo woo in any word is perfect to me, you know? If we can incorporate oo woo in every word, that's a mistake. But <laughs> if we could, that would be great. Our own oo woo language. A woo woo. Alright, just going all the way along. Yeah, here we go. Any word? Give us your worst. I, could, I didn't even think of any that were like bad. I was just like, this is a mistake. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> Let's incorporate into all words. I mean, there's always poo woo. Very good, very good. <laughs> and I mean, if something doesn't have an oo already, it's kind of hard to do it, but you know. Going number two, woo. Very good, very good. <laughs> That's, that works. <laughs> sip, sip. You are painting catnip grass. Meow. There we go. Just for Mr. K, our cat. Here we are. Catnip on the hill. Knew it. I will refrain. Oh, go for it. <laughs> I dare you. What is it? sweats <laughs> you're doing straight brush strokes or angled um mostly straight i would say kate but some are definitely angled yeah i kind of do 
maybe a little bit left, a little bit right, just to make them sway a little into each other, but mostly up and down, I would say. And just a little bit of paint too. See, the more paint you stack on, the more it gets a little bit thicker like this. If you want it a little bit more transparent, just use a little bit of paint. And then that way you can still see the green through. It looks a little more soft. Good question. This is a trap. <laughs> Banned immediately. <laughs> How dare you? I am curious though. <laughs> Sweats, <laughs> monk ass. Go for it. That's probably enough for me. You can add as much as you want, but again, I like it a little more sparse. I would say in my original, it's even more sparse than that, but here you go. So we have two more layers. What do we have? So we have got some dandelions. We'll do that. She watching, she waiting. Oh, I'm worried about the pizza, you guys. I'm just worried that um, we're gonna see the same issue as last time with the pizza. We'll stay, we'll stay patient. I will call later if need be. Let me zoom in on the third layer just so you see what's coming up. <laughs> there, there's Gandalf. So yeah, third layer is just dotting on some little yellow flowers. I think they're just little dandelions I've put here. Uh, a little bit more uh, cluttered on the bottom and then making them more sparse on the way up. So we get a little bit more depth as well. And it helps kind of highlight this area for the uh, dark layer coming up next, right? So a couple of reasons I did that. So yeah, that'll be on the third layer. Cat's trying to steal your tuna. Oh no. What was the issue last time I missed that stream? Oh, um, the pizza specifically, I don't know. Oh, one second, guys. Pizza specifically, Poppy never came. Um, and then I called Treat, well, I didn't call. I emailed Treat Stream and they were very quick to um, help me out. Give me 10 seconds, guys, 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Poppy, it was just the restaurant. Um, the the restaurant, something about their system didn't accept the order. They had like some sort of verification process and the order wasn't accepted for whatever reason. But then Treat Street called the restaurant and was like, hi, why didn't you accept the order? And then it came the second time. So I don't really know the technicalities, but it was just something about it not being sent through their system correctly. So it was a quick fix, but I'm keeping my eye on things. Too much tuna. I'm exhausted. Well done. Thanks, Kate. I feel like I'm getting pretty good at timing it. Just don't want anyone to panic. <laughs> like, oh no, it's going to take 10 minutes. No, no. It's like a good 10 to 15 seconds. All right, everyone. So I'm going to move on to that third layer that I was just talking about with the little dandelion. So I'm going back into um, that yellow and white mixture with my medium round brush. I'm just going to very lightly tap on some little dots. So I'm just using the tip of the brush and tap, tap, tapping. And I would say I'm tapping again more that are closer to the bottom. And then as I get up further, I'm just reducing them. So I'm just tapping maybe a little bit lighter and a little bit less. So it looks like they're all kind of, uh, yeah, dispersing a little bit more, just getting further away from us. We see a little less of them. And again, this way you can kind of really outline this edge here. It really helps uh, the viewers see the different layers a little bit better. It's like you're highlighting the bottom of that, uh, that third layer there. So yeah, just uh, slowly dispersing as you go up, making them a little bit less and less um, full further up. So just using the tip or even the side of the brush, you don't have to go straight at it. You can kind of use the side if you want. Either one works. But yeah, just a little bit of paint, that way it comes off nice and soft as well. Cool. I'm gonna keep going around there. Nice countdown. Thank you, Poppy. Final countdown. Don't copyright strike me. Plebs here! Hello! How's it going, Peepo Poo Poo? How's it going? Peepo Poo Woo. Ha 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 ha. 
caught me in the middle of a tutorial. Do you work today, Pleb? Do you work tonight? Have you worked today already? Answer all the questions. Or don't, you know, it's your choice. I don't want to make you do anything. Just glad you're here. There we go. See, that brightens up that layer a little bit more. So I'll just leave that for another minute or two as you guys figure that one out. And then we'll go on to our last layer. I'm off tonight. A few personal days were needed. Excellent. Okay. Well, I hope everything's okay for the personal days and maybe you're just meaning that you were getting a little bit tired with everything and that's fair considering how you've been feeling. So I hope you enjoy your days. Do you know what you're going to do for them? Just kind of chill. Huh. Games. <laughs> cool. Cool. Those are always a good plan. Games are always fun. Do you know what games you're going to play? TJ's back. Welcome in, TJ. How was your afternoon? <laughs> games. <laughs> I'll just zoom you in on the last layer. There's not a whole lot of detail to the last layer, but oh, I love how it zooms in on Gandalf first. So you can see there's just a little bit of texture down here, just again to add some, something a little extra, but nothing really fancy. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Just gonna zoom you in the meantime. Ha, ah, it's cold and snowing out, so I'm just hanging out being late. That sounds really nice though, Pleb, honestly. Again, it sounds like it's what you need to if you need a few personal days. It sounds like you've been working a lot. I love, I love the aesthetic of it being very cold outside, just nice and warm inside, just nice and cozy, playing some games. It's perfect. Hmm. I see you're a pirate. Hmm. Got it, got it. Is that game having some sort of a resurgence? Like, I feel like I've heard about it a lot in the last week or two. Maybe from you, but also I think from others. And I know it's been out for a fair bit now. Would it be super distracting for you if I, you had one headphone and an ear of music you really enjoy? Or would that be too much going on? I don't think it would be poppy. Um, I've talked about solutions regarding uh, the whole copyright music thing. And I, I honestly just haven't put it together, but I have a plan for it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's kind of what you're saying. I kind of just want to wear some headphones or little, little buds and have my own music playing. Unfortunately, you guys wouldn't hear it. But I usually stream... Um, not stream. I have my Spotify, I guess, public through Discord. So if anyone wants to hear what I'm listening to and listen along, you can actually listen along live uh, when I'm listening to my Spotify. So that would be my solution. I would maybe have something soft in the background for those who aren't listening along on Spotify, like maybe some nature noises or just very, very, um, yeah, very quiet, relaxed beats. So it's not interfering with my music if anyone else is listening along. Um, I just haven't set it all up yet, but yeah, I've got, I've got thoughts about it because I would really like to get back to listening to my own music when I paint. It really helps. As per this afternoon, that was proven. I, uh, I felt so productive and so in the zone when I was listening to my own stuff. So loads of new content was added. Okay. I gotcha. Sorry for that. I just fish. Okay. <laughs> all about that fishing life. Makes sense. That's fun. That's me and Stardew too. I have to get a Spotify account and listen. Oh yeah, and you'd, I, oh, do you need it? I guess you would need a Spotify account. Um, I know you can view it on Discord Poppy without a Spotify account. Whenever I'm listening to it, it is there if I choose to share it. Um, but I think, I guess you would need a Spotify to listen live, yes. Yes, but those are free to create. Uh, you don't need Spotify premium. You just, you just might be hit with ads here and there and then it might be out of sync to what I'm listening to, but you'd kind of get an idea of what I like to listen to anyway be a little better than the same lo-fi hip-hop beats every single time, you know? <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm just going on to the last layer here, adding some texture. So what I'm doing on my plate is I'm using the same brush and I'm just grabbing a little more blue and mixing into my previous green. So the previous green being the darkest green. So just make it a little darker with a little bit more blue. And all I do is I tap that on top. So very lightly just kind of tapping, I'm not tapping uh, a whole new layer. I'm just kind of lightly tapping on top of that dark green so that I get a little bit of like a splotchy um, top layer. I know it's a little hard to see, or at least it is on my screen. Maybe you can see it, but let's see if I can bring it forward here. Oh yeah, see the difference there. I've now tapped on here. It looks a little more textured. 
and over here I've left it a little more blank. So again, you can see not a huge difference, but it's a little something just to get that layer a little bit more detailed, right? Considering it's the closest layer to us, it'll just bring a little more texture to it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's how it works, Poppy. Can't stick around to saying hi, looks great. Thanks, Jen. Enjoy your Friday night, whatever you're up to. Appreciate you. Good evening, Shay. Welcome in as well. Hi, bye, Jen. <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> Love how that ended. Best story ever. Pizza. <laughs> Tips out. All the hellos. Everyone's so friendly. Okay. There we go. So that's the last, uh, yeah, grass layer. We will be working on the tree and the bushes next. We have a little bit of a tree moment coming in here, a little bush moment over here. So I'll teach you how to do that next. Uh, again, we want to get those on before we do all the cleanup, just to make sure we're not uh, overlapping the leaves onto the brown or onto the inside of the little hobbit hole. Yeah. Tips hats. AEB or EAB, excuse me, 60. Hmm, what should I call you? EAB. Probably EAB. Welcome in. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. I'm teaching everyone how to do this step by step right now. Just so you know, how's your evening going? <laughs> yes, he bought us all pizza. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't refer to you as anything other than pizza. <laughs> you eat all my pizza. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. Do you prefer me? I, I would be down to call you pizza too. Like I've made that connection fully if uh, pizza is your preferred. Because <laughs> I understand the pizza Twitch account was probably taken. <laughs> this is like marriage 101 safe and pizza for the wife. True. You in trouble now. Pizza works. Okay, cool. It's a little easier to say rather than this is it. Yeah. And I think pizza is just more you. I think you personified that whole pizza aesthetic. Yeah. Very well. I'm glad your evening's going well. And again, EAB, if you want me to call you something else, let me know. I'm struggling with your news name just a little bit. Eeb. EAB. I, I saved some of the mayo soup, though. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Woo. <laughs> Pizza woo. <laughs> um, all right. Let's zoom in on the tree here. All right, so yeah, we've got a nice uh, couple branches coming in. It's, it's hardly a tree. It's just a couple branches coming in from the side. And then we've got just a little bush out in the distance again, just to give some depth. So I'm going to go back to the green that we used for the third layer here. I called it like a, um, like a just grass green. Kelly green, I guess, is another word for it. Just a regular green. Good old green. Uh, and I'm using my medium round brush still. So if you need to remix some, it's just yellow and blue. I would do a little extra yellow, a little less blue, and that'll give you a nice medium green tone. Don't forget the guy locked in the basement. Me, I would crust. <laughs> Be believe. What's ESS? S. Oh, that's your name. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe? Yeah, Shay said nice to meet you, S. I see. If you prefer S, then there we are. Quite done there. Back to pirating. <laughs> oh my gosh. Attaches. Well, that's, that's aggressive. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I've done what you asked. <laughs> ready to please you with my pirate leg. All right, so I've got my green ready to go. I'm just going to keep this zoomed in for now so you can see the nice details. But essentially, I'm just going to add like three branches just coming anywhere from the left hand side. So maybe one comes like over here. I'm just using the tip of the brush, by the way, and just with a little bit of paint so it stays nice and thin. And there's one here, kind of dips down. Let's do another one down here. So three. It might be covered a little by the door because it will overlap. So just remember that if you want it a little bit longer as a result, you can lengthen it. But yeah, just some little branches for now. And they don't need to be stick thin. You can see I uh, accidentally made this a little bit thicker, a little bit larger. Because we'll be covering with leaves anyway. That's my plan. <laughs> I was dedicated. That's my boy. Do, do, do. All right, and then once we have the little branches on, we're just adding some leaves. So essentially I'm just grabbing some more green and I like to use the side of the brush for this part. I don't really use the uh, going like straight at it. I don't go tap, tap straight at it like I was the dandelions. I really prefer the side of the brush so I can do some small brush strokes 
I like to tap and stroke. And that way I get more like oval shapes rather than uh, little splotches. Comes off a little bit cleaner. So yeah, just kind of like keeping your brush on the canvas, moving a little bit, releasing, and that creates a nice little leaf shape. So I'm just filling in those little branches. I like to add more leaf shapes by the branch itself. So right at the core, you could say. And then as I get further away from the branch, I kind of separate the leaves a little bit. So it makes it look a little more delicate around the outsides. Uh, all the leaves do not have to touch. You can see if anything, I like to purposely uh, leave a few that are uh, disconnected fully. It just makes it again, look a little more uh, light and airy on the outside rather than all kind of stuck together and very blobby. So feel free to keep a few that are just, just barely hanging on or just, uh, just off of the branch. As long as they're close by, you can kind of assume that there's a little twig there. The viewer will assume something's hanging on to it. <laughs> Whoa, pleb. Yeah, another burn on my arm. Oh no, magic, I'm sorry. You burned it making tuna? Or were you making something else? Summer, I did it last time too. Yeah, I thought you were keeping it safe with tuna. Sorry to hear though. So yeah, you can see really bulking up the middle. That's kind of my, my secret. I like to cover up that branch if it's a little bit thick or a little bit wobbly. And then nice and sparse on the outsides. And there's one and I'll just do the other two now. Tuna helper, oh, excuse me. I guess I've never had tuna helper. I just assumed you were uh, making a little tuna sandwich or something like that, tuna helper. It's like, like hamburger helper, except with tuna. I've only heard of hamburger helper with the white glove, little smiley guy. Tuna, hamburger, chicken, they're all good. Oh, okay. So it is like that. Interesting. Yeah, I just can't picture that for some reason. I guess I'm so used to just having like tuna mixed with mayo on a sandwich. Can't imagine really cooking it. Just the flaky tuna, you know? It's gonna hit the pot. Ah, oh, gotcha, I gotcha. Oh no, that's not good. No. Different seasoning noodles. Gotcha. Okay, like it's okay, okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. Couple types doing. Oh, oh, very nice. Yum, yum. Yeah, I had no idea there were that many options, honestly. I just know it is hamburger helper. I almost did the Pillsbury Doughboy noise and that's not correct. Similar looking characters, not the same, not the same. I don't know what the white glove name uh, guy's name is. He's just a cute little white glove with a nice red nose. Big old smile. Let me help you. Made some hamburger. All right, so there's three little branches. And the other thing you can do, everybody, too, if you're thinking they look a little bit off, um, sometimes I like to make it a little bit thinner at the edge here because there's going to be less leaves while the branch is ending and then kind of thickening up at the bases. So if you want, you can add a few more kind of coming in over here. So I'm just kind of tapping or brushing the edge of my brush here to help just fill up a little bit more, kind of bulk it up over here. And that way you can start to see them separate as they get further away. I'm gonna zoom out on this now, just so you can see again, kind of the uh, proportions. Oh no, now I wanna see someone do a holiday Hobbit door series, would be very cozy. With like lights around, that would be so cute. Types in the US, oh, okay. Yeah, I was unaware. I could totally see that poppy with some little lights going on and off and stuff. A nice like bow on the door, I could see that too. Or a wreath or something. So many options. Holiday lights, pumpkin feel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it you or somebody else who was doing uh, the wreath painting that I did, but in a bunch of different holidays? I forget if that was you or someone else. There was like a Halloween one that was done recently. I think two people tried doing a Halloween one, honestly. It was more like cobwebby and things like that. More oranges were incorporated. Okay, it's Canadian, gotcha. Try to, okay, Halloween one, there you go, okay. Yeah, someone took um, 
used my design as inspiration and tried to do, yeah, a different holiday one. I thought that was really cool. But yeah, that was you, I guess, trying the Halloween one. Very cool. People were saying they were going to do, like, an Easter one. Yeah, Bats and Spires. That's, that was it. That was it. That was it. Cool, cool. I honestly forgot who did that, and I remember thinking it was so neat. That was such a quick turnaround from what I remember, too. <laughs> it was like, I'm going to do it. All right, so I'm just going to do a similar technique, everybody, for the right-hand side. So there's a little bush over here. See, maybe it's a little bit messier. It's a little more like tapping this time, but you can do the same thing. You can either do like the using the tip of your brush and stroking to do all those little leaves, or you can just tap, tap, tap. And that's just going on the top right hand side of the uh, of that field there. So you're just kind of laying it right on top. Just again, something a little extra to give a little more depth, making the background just a little more interesting. So for this, I just kind of, uh, yeah, keep it a little taller at the start. And then I just kind of bring it down closer to the hill and then it just kind of disappears because the bush ends. Yep, that's all. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. Oh, it is on its way. Excellent. Wow, it worked. Vonda, thank you so much again. It's going to be dropped off very, very soon. I will collect it very quickly when it comes and then I'll come right back. I will not be eating it during the tutorial. I will save it for later. Catnip bush. Yeah, you see, Mr. Uh... <laughs> KR Cat is uh, seeing catnip everywhere. Catnip obsessed. There's some catnip. There's some catnip. Oh my gosh, it's everywhere. There we go. I think I'll leave Gandalf for the very end. You could technically um, add that in, add him in whenever you want, but I'm going to leave him for the end. Uh, Mobrock, thank you for the follow. Welcome. And I just saw you from two minutes ago. My alerts are very low volume because I'm doing a step by step painting tutorial right now. So, welcome in. Feel free to chat if you want, or just uh, lurk around. We're probably, we're a little more than halfway down. We've just got some details around the outside now. So yeah, you can see that pretty much completes the um, outside landscape, again, except for Gandalf, very important part, we'll, but, but we'll add him later. Um, so for now, we will be going back in and doing a second coat on top of here, just to make it a lot cleaner. We'll be doing the beige first. And then I'm going to go in with the brown to help uh, kind of frame everything and add some nice little details. I added some nice uh, mm, words, 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 not baseboards. They're up top. Are they sconces? Ooh, ooh, roast me. Um, yeah, just some nice little like details and features in the wall, some little patterns, little designs and stuff like that. So yeah, anyway, don't worry about my words and my lack of them. Uh, yeah, that's just the plan. I'll give you another minute or so if you're still working on the bush or the tree or anything else in the field. Which you can always go back to, by the way. It's not mandatory that we like finish that part. It just helps at least to have anything around the edges done. So we're not worried about interfering with the edges. But if you plan to add more in the middles or clean up anything, you can always do that a little bit later. I'm just going to start washing off my large flat brush. Ah. And then I'll teach you how to mix a nice beige color. Do, do, do. If you're prepping for beige, you're gonna want lots of white with a little bit of yellow and even a tiny bit of red in there, but it's mostly white and yellow. So if you don't have white on your plate, oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, uh, then you wanna add some white. It's just my jug running out of paint, I swear. Bloop, bloop, bloop. splattered all over my plate. See all that white there? I heard a poot. Yep. I said, excuse me for the bottle. It's all my bottle's fault. Blame bottle. All right. So I'm going to mix together our nice beige colors. So I would mix lots of this because this is going to go everywhere around our hobbit hole. Um, even where you see the brown and everything, I would just put it everywhere and then we can put brown on top. Same with the door. Um, I'm just going to put the green on top of the beige. It's not going to interfere because the green is very, very dark compared to the beige. So in my, uh, on my plate here, I'm going to mix together white with a little bit of yellow. Just grabbing a little extra here. So lots of white, little bit of yellow. So you're essentially making a very buttery yellow. So 
We're going for a nice light buttery yellow. Again, hardly changing the colors, just like barely there yellow. And then I also like to add just a tiny bit of red, just a tiny bit. So I'm not trying to turn it orange or anything because if you add lots of yellow and red, you will turn it orange. But I just find it warms up the, uh, the light yellow just a little bit more into more of a beige color. And again, it's your choice. If you want to do a different wall color, you can. I was honestly looking at photos of um, Hobbit homes from the movies. And uh, yeah, they were all very kind of earthy tones. So beiges, browns, things like that. So I was trying to keep it pretty similar to what I saw. But of course, you're welcome to change it up. Frame, door frame, maybe the words. Yeah, <laughs> I was looking at, um, oh, excuse me, one moment. Thanks for your patience. Um, yeah, I was looking for the word for this stuff, Poppy, <laughs> honestly. Like not, yeah, they, they go a, a top on, on top of the wall just as more of like a, a nice feature. Nice aesthetically pleasing feature. Is it a sconce? I don't know. It's not a sconce, is it? That goes around the door. I don't know. Not baseboards, they're just like boards. Trim, that's a good, yep, thank you. I guess trim would be the right one. Is there not a word for like the big ones though? Probably. Yeah, trim is good. Trim would be like everywhere else around here. But I feel like there's one for the big boards that kind of go... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Trim is a good word. I'll stick with it. Thank you. Bless you. I've got my beige ready. I'm going to go ahead and have it. <laughs> I'm going to stop worrying about words and stuff. So as mentioned, I'm putting that literally everywhere around the landscape. So I'm covering... You can see it covers everything at this point because it's all base of white or at least a very, very light color, so you can just cover anything and everything you want. A beam. Yes, thank you so much. Oh my god. <laughs> crown molding. Oh, that's too fancy. Yeah, I know what crown molding is. It's not. Yeah, I just thinking of a beam. Maybe crown molding, sure. Trimmer crown molding. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I think I'm just looking for a beam. Honestly, Gray, <laughs> I think that's what I was struggling with. Just a big old beam. Yeah, crown molding is way too fancy for this home. Uh, I do not have any crown molding in there, I believe. <laughs> oh my god, beam is the word, bless you. <laughs> it's a lovely potato color. It's true. It's so true, a beautiful potato. So once again, you can use this to continue to clean up your circle, or you can wait for the brown. I would just make sure you're not leaving a huge gap, so if you want to kind of close in you know, close to where your circle is uh, starting there. That's perfect. And then you can use the brown to really clean it up and uh, yeah, make it nice and yeah, clean it up nice and clean. All those words. Really struggling with words today, if you couldn't tell. A trim. Oh my God. My brain. A beam. It's just a beam. That's honestly what I was looking for, Gray. Just a beam. It's a beam going on top of the ceiling across the ceiling, not on top of it. All right, just adding the potato color on the left-hand side. Again, lots of white, little yellow, little red is the combo I'm using. Potato, potato. But yeah, again, very earthy tones is what I, uh, is what I saw when I was looking at photos. I gotcha, you smart, you smart. That's the thing with me and words too, like, <laughs> everyone says the right word. I'm like, no, that's not the one I want though. <laughs> Guys coming in with your crown moldings and trim and I'm just like, no though. <laughs> You're right, but not the one I want. Try and guess the one that my brain wants. You know? Gray knows though. <laughs> she got it. I is stupid and must be all hurt and stuff. That's how I feel every day. <laughs> every day of my life on stream. Forget word. Can't pronounce word. Oh no, oh no. Video footage exists forever. <laughs> Yeek. Almost there. Just trying to clean up this side. 
Yep. Honestly, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a thing. <laughs> I'm always worried. It's very embarrassing when like you, you you mispronounce a word or you can't think of one, and it's like, what language are you speaking, dude? You know? What did you learn growing up about English? Apparently not a lot. We do our best, you know? We all do our best. Managing everything we do and then also using words and stuff. They be hard. Okay, there's some beige. So again, you can see my circle is not cleaned up. I need a little bit of work on it, but I'm gonna do that with the brown coming up next. My pizza is probably at the door, so I'm just going to very quickly get it, if you'll excuse me for just one quick minute. Vonda, thank you so, so much again. Again, I'm not eating it now. I'm just going to show you the controversy, if I can even figure out how to open this. Oh dear. There it goes. Controversial pizza has arrived. Excellent. Excellent. Looks good. Vonda, thank you so, so much again. I will enjoy this after the tutorial. It smells so good. So delicious. Yeah, so for those who didn't catch that, um, Vonda in chat, Mr. KR Cat, used a function called Treat Stream to order me food on stream. So this was a gift from her. Thank you so, so much. It's a magic third party service which helps you, um, helps people in chat order me food. Amazing. It's It's been life changing, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to be fair, English is a hard language though. <laughs> I'm like, I'm too cool. Yep. I has hit my head on a uh, beam. That's me right now. <laughs> I has hit my head on the beam. Much rather say I hit my head on the crown molding. Much fancier injury. True. <laughs> I got a crown molding injury. <laughs> Ping is going well. Good, Phoenix. I'm glad. Oh, good. You got the brown green figured out. Pizza run. Like a cantaloupe. Ah. That's kind of right, is it not? Like the outside of a cantaloupe, Krithi? I feel like that's very close to a beige. Mine almost looks kind of green tone, honestly, compared to what I'm seeing here as well. So maybe I had blue in there by accident on this one anyway, but it's still, it's still a type of beige, I would say. Yeah, still very earthy. <laughs> Hi, Bran. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> it's the controversial one, yep. Yeah, I think cantaloupe is, if you're thinking of the outside of a cantaloupe, I think that's beautiful color. I see you behind canvas. Yup, exposed. Pizza zoom. <laughs> Thanks, pizza. Stream pizza close up. Take a bite for KR. You want me to take a bite? I'll take a bite when I uh, do the next step here. Maybe run an ad break to have some. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. I don't like to interrupt the uh, the tutorial with things like that. I've never actually run an ad break either, pizza. If I can be completely honest, <laughs> so I honestly don't even know how to do it. <laughs> I'm sure I could figure it out, but I never have. Yep, true story. Yeah, I'll do some brown and then I'll have a little bite just for you. Just for you, Vonda, as a thank you. Otherwise, you'll see me have a little, a few more bites after the tutorial. I just don't want to be too distracting from the uh, step by step. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about... Oh, and Emma, thank you for the follow there. I'm sorry I missed you four minutes ago. The alerts are turned down just for the tutorial, but welcome in. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do some brown. So we have a nice dark brown around this outside here. And I mean, we could do either. We could either do brown first and then the door or just kind of use the brown around the door. But let's do all of the brown first just to kind of get it all done. All of the crown molding and trim. Ooh, beautiful words. Uh, and then we'll put the door right on top of everything, okay? So we can do um, a nice dark brown to begin with. I'll kind of zoom you in a little bit. So <laughs> a little bit. You can see a little bit of a difference here. We have a darker brown around the yeah trim of the door. Good word. And then uh, a little bit further out 
uh, is a little more of like a uh, medium brown, I would say. More of a taupe, something like that. Okay, so starting with a nice deep, dark kind of uh, chocolatey brown. I'm gonna use my medium round brush to mix that and I'm gonna mix three colors. I'm gonna mix red, yellow, and black. I'm gonna start with red and yellow, just equal amounts of red and yellow. And then I will slowly add some black. Can make a video of step-by-step -step prime subscription. True as my ad. <laughs> I think Poppy, I don't get to choose my ads. I think that's all Amazon, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But who knows, Amazon might have an ad for their prime subscription. So there you go. Lynn, welcome in, good evening. How's it going? You can see we're just doing our Lord of the Rings painting right now, welcome in. Maybe a specific egg company would sponsor your egg paintings coming up soon, perhaps. You know, um, I don't know if it's in America, but in Canada, there's a company called EB Eggs. Aaron Bun Eggs, we could use, uh, you could use their sponsorship. That would be the perfect partnership. There's a day where every single Twitch ad I saw was for Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I remember that day. There were at least two or three people, maybe including you, Shay, who came in and they were like, I just got a Tinder ad. That's bizarre. I've never gotten one personally, but yeah, there was one day where everyone was saying Tinder ads everywhere. So again, as a reminder for brown, if anyone's struggling with that, it was red and yellow mixed together first, equal amounts and then small amounts of black until you get more of a dark chocolatey brown. Going good. Good, Lynn. Decided to come and see you. Yeah, yeah. Did you, um, I know you messaged me about the Toronto rain tutorial. Did you post it anywhere? I meant to ask you to, uh, if I could check it out. Because I think you said you finished, right? You said it was relaxing putting all the rain on. No ads with that sweet sub baby. But yeah, their channel is just seeing it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. It wasn't you. You're right. Yeah, others were like, well, just got off of a Tinder ad. <laughs> Facebook keeps trying to get me to sign up for something. For dating? Fiance gets the same... Oh, yeah. Facebook is really pushing the Facebook dating feature. I've had that, too. All right. So I've got my chocolatey brown, everybody. Whenever you're ready, you're simply adding the chocolatey brown as a nice frame around this circle. So this is what I meant. You can really use this color to help clean up edges. You can kind of go in between the outside view and the beige and just kind of go wherever you want, right? If you need to cut further into the circle, you can now do that. If you want to just go completely in the middle of those two, maybe you spent a lot of work getting a nice perfect circle, then you can just do that. Just kind of follow your way all the way around. And I mean, this, this line is not thin at all, so you can really use a lot of pressure on your brush, kind of let the bristles um, spread apart and that way you get a nice uh, crisp edge on each side. And just going nice and slow all the way around. Just as usual, if you want to start a little thinner or a little smaller than you want for the frame, that might be a good idea because then what you can do is kind of thicken up on whatever edge you need to. So if you need to kind of shift a little further out or a little further in, you can then thicken up from that side if that's making sense. So yeah, just take, take your time going all the way around. But yeah, the... Um, yeah, Facebook dating, it's uh, its being very heavily pushed at me too. It's all like, don't you want to date the people you know on Facebook? I was like, no, no, I really don't. These are all people who I haven't talked to for 10 years and I don't know where they're at in life and I don't think I want to send them a dating message, but thanks so much. It's more than that, though I think it says it'll connect you with mutual friends and stuff. I don't know, it all seems very bizarre to me. Not into it, thank you though, Facebook. Nice try, Mark. <laughs> Break them onto the next color. Nice, nice phoenix. Oops, I forgot. It's true. It's all done. I'm happy with the way it turned out. Yeah, it's okay. I'm relaxing. Good. I'm just glad it was relaxing, Linz. No worries if you, uh, if you didn't post it. I'm always just curious to see, of course. But yeah, I was more happy to read your message saying you felt it was relaxing. Because I agree. I love that raindrop step. Again, I really like that it surprised a lot of people. I think a lot of people thought it was very difficult and impossible, and truly, I think it just takes some time and patience with that one. Silent, hello, sorry, late to the party. No, no worries, had to uh, play VR with a nephew and his mom. Of course, mom bailed early. Nah. Oh, I'm sure VR was fun though, totally worth it. What were you playing, Silent? I've only played one game on VR before, but it looks really cool. I just mean all the capabilities of VR it looks very, very cool. 
Ooh, see, my, my circle's a little choppy. It's a little funny. So for example, I see it looks kind of straight here. I could kind of widen out this outside edge and make it maybe a little more round. See, it kind of fixed it there. So that's what I mean. You can work from either side to kind of round out anything. See how that, yeah, that really fixed it just by going around the outside. Kind of look at both edges and see which way you want to thicken from. It's getting quite thick here, although the door is going to go here, so we're not too worried about that. Are they trying to say, Poppy? Yeah, I guess they won't get the hint until it's changed. Right, right, right. <laughs> so your status is engaged. I was gonna say, maybe you just haven't updated it and they're like, oh, are you still single, lol. That's funny though. Not yet. <laughs> Facebook's like, we don't know. Better have some backup plans. Better contact that kid from high school that you haven't talked to in 10 years. That's a good backup. Oculus Mini Golf! He's having a little bit of a challenge. Ah, oh, like he's very good. That sounds fun. So we can't really do a whole lot of that stuff right now. Virtual reality is so relevant now with everything going on with COVID. We can really do anything now. Live in our own virtual worlds. Woo! Want to post my painting, but I really forgot. Oh yeah, no worries. Okay, sounds good, Lynn, sounds good. Let me know where you post it, if it's privately or in Discord, wherever you want, wherever you want. Uh, would you actually do a painting on an, on an egg for a weekend stream? Would be neat to watch you paint on one? Easter, Easter's a thing. I would love to tie dye some eggs or to do some little egg designs. Honestly, I think that would be fun. No worries, Phoenix. No, my status is still, ah, oh, has me as living in a different town. Yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> I think I'm still in school. <laughs> Just kidding. Doesn't need to know my whole life. Yeah, I agree. I've not updated a thing on that in years, man. Profile pictures from at least four years ago. At least, at least. Yeah, I think it says I'm living like in Vancouver, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, for real, Poppy. I, that, I'm always looking for things like that, especially for, um, like I keep saying, like holidays or events. Um, anything artistic and crafty painting on an egg beautiful like dipping some eggs i haven't done that in years i would love to do that getting some dye and dipping i would totally look up some like fancier tutorials too for that and see if i can replicate them that would be very very fun like you can use wax and uh you know the yeah white wax and uh do little designs on it then it doesn't show up in the dye and then it yeah comes up all fancy i'm not explaining it right but you know you know yeah, I'll look up some cool ways to uh, to paint some eggs for sure, for sure. Buy a whole 12 pack of some EB eggs. Aaron Bun eggs. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, Poppy, I think I'd want to do something a little bit different, right? Um, I'd rather look up something a little more complicated and fancy personally. So yeah, I would say look out for that. Okay, so let's do the trim. I'm gonna call this uh, the trim and the beams. Um, so just to kind of take you around here, what I've done, you can really fill this area up however you want. You can do some fancier things. I was even gonna maybe add a second window or something like that. No, not a second window, a first window, because that's a door. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, little holes or whatnot, little trinkets around. But I just kind of stuck with, again, the trim and just fancy like molding around, crown molding. Um, so I'm just using a lighter brown color. So all you need to do is um, using the medium round brush, I'd recommend continuing to use that one. Just grab a little white, put it into your brown. That'll lighten it up just a little bit. You'll all get different tones of brown, I'm sure, but you can play with the tone by adding more yellow, a little more red, a little more black if you need to. It all kind of works together. It makes different, uh, yeah, different tones of brown. Ukrainian aid decorating. What's that, Lori? Is that kind of what I was talking about with the kind of the wax or any sort of preparation to have, have a design kind of showing through, if that makes sense? <laughs> True dot, says Wookie. <laughs> All right, so yeah, medium brown. So adding some white to your existing brown. And yeah, just to, just to overview, what I did is I kind of did a nice round archway kind of with a little bit of a gap around the uh, circle of the, of the uh, door there, the door frame. I did a brown uh, stripe kind of along the bottom. You could say that's the, uh, 
uh, more trim, I guess. What did I call that? Baseboard area? Whatever. Whatever. I'm not even going to try with the words, okay? <laughs> yeah, just brown along the bottom. Um, I did kind of two vertical stripes coming down from the beams, which I will add as well. And then I did some fancy designs, which I'll take you through. And then just kind of filling up with uh, any old shape. This is kind of like a rounded triangle. I just kind of kept it at a right hand angle and then kind of curved around the door. Same thing here. There's a little bit of that uh, fancy stuff peeking out from below. Yeah, so I'll take you through all of that just one thing at a time. Let's start with the top because I started by explaining the top there. So I start maybe at, what would this be, like 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock on a clock? 12, 1, 2, something like that. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> Wipe away, there we go. Easy as that, go away, go away. I'm just going to start with a little bit of a gap outside of that frame, and I'm just going to do a nice thick line going all the way around like this. So starting at about 1 or 2 o'clock, just kind of keeping the same distance from the frame, so the same gap. And of course you can go in with beige later if you need to clean anything up like me. Like if you bonk your brush by accident, oopsie daisy. And then it's gonna appear maybe over here, coming down. There we go. So just kind of, yeah, a nice little, little design to frame. Wax and dye. Okay, there we go. So it is a technique. Cool. Not heard of the wax, but I can imagine how it works. Yeah, exactly. It'd be nifty. Exactly. I just want to do something a little different, you know? Not just like color on egg. It'll be a little different. <clears throat> Alright, so we've got that nice round archway. Um, I'll add the beams now. So the beams are actually two steps. We want to do um, just kind of like a large um, three-dimensional rectangle coming out to the sides like this and then we're going to highlight the inside edge because that's closest to the doorway so it's going to be having some light on that uh, right hand and left hand edge. So what I'm doing is I'm starting where that uh, curve ended and I'm just going to do a nice thick line kind of coming up to the right. And then just to clean it up I'm actually going to make it into again more of a beam so just at the start of it I'm doing a vertical line and a horizontal line, kind of making a little bit of an L shape. And then I'll do the angles coming up. So this is, yeah, creating a nice big thick beam. And then we're going to highlight so that we can see the one side compared to the other side. Right now it is all one color, it looks like a big blob. But I'll make a nice highlight on the inside. I'm just going to do it on the other side here. Again, I'm trying to line them up so they're about level horizontally here. This one might be covered up a little by the door, but still nice to have. So I just kind of do the angled line first. And then this one goes straight up and down to the left, so it's a backwards L shape. And you bring those two angled lines up like that. I'm gonna fill that all in, and then we'll highlight the uh, inside edge. Again, this one's probably going to be covered a lot more than the other one, just so you know. But still good to have it, just because everyone's doors will be a little bit different. Luke is here! Welcome in, Luke! How's it going? Sounds good, Pleb. Enjoy whatever stuffs you're up to. Thanks for the lurk. Bye-bye. I assume some games. I hope so. I hope so. Enjoying your time off. Okay, very quickly I'll just highlight these and then I'll go back to using the same brown again. So I'm just going to create a little pile of a lighter brown, maybe just on the edge here. So grabbing just a little more white mixing in, so that's my regular brown. This is a little bit lighter. And I just use this very light brown to highlight the inside edge of the beam. So on this one on the right it's going to be kind of that top left hand edge. So I'm creating that vertical line coming straight across like this. Highlighting that edge, see it makes it look a little more three-dimensional. We now have a bottom and a side. Oh, sounds good, Lynn. Yep, go back to relax, take care. You too, Lynn, you too. Glad you're having a nice relaxing uh, Friday evening. You too, take care as well. And then this side, again, it's the inside edge, so we want to do the uh, vertical line coming down. And then we'll do an angled line coming up and across. So we've separated and we're going to highlight that top part because it's inside. 
Pog, welcome back. I know you followed a little bit earlier. Hello. Oh, that's so pretty. Thank you. Yeah, Lord of the Rings inspired. Are you a fan of the movies or books? There you go. See, it's a little more of a three-dimensional shape now. Give you just a quick minute if you're still working on that, and then we'll keep going on the trim. Sending love. Yay! Thank you, Lynn. You too. Sending all that love right back. So yeah, if you need a little more brown, just mix that up now. We're, we're still using the medium brown that we were starting with there. We only needed that light brown for a quick minute there. Going right back to the medium brown though. Do, do. What did I do? Oh, for the last step there, Chuck, it was just using a lighter brown to uh, make these a little more three-dimensional. So I mixed a little bit of white into my previous brown that I was using for the trim. And I just kind of carved out kind of the, uh, the edge by going up and down. And then I did an angled line coming up and I highlighted just that top area there. So the top or left hand side. And then same thing on this side, just opposite. Yeah, the lighter brown. So using a little white in the existing brown. So for this one, I just went up and down here and then went right across like that, highlighting the upper part as well. Cause yeah, they're both facing, I guess, into the light of the doorway. The light is kind of hitting off the edges this way and then leaving the bottoms a little bit darker. If you need me to re-explain, let me know. I know it's a little bit like all over the place cause we started with one color and then stacked on more. But yeah, we use the lighter brown on top of the old brown. Let me know if any of it's not making sense and I'll uh, keep helping you out. For now though, I'm gonna go back to my regular kind of medium brown and I'm just going to add some more trim everywhere. Um, oh wow, another one. I'm very bad at this. <laughs> I keep putting these little notches everywhere. Uh, so I'm going to add two vertical lines coming down from the beam. So yeah, we have a nice thick beam. So we want to use both edges and bring them down for a nice design. Same here, down for a nice design. Although this will be mostly covered just so you know. Let's go over here first. So yeah, just using the tip of the brush coming straight down. Might overlap a little with the door, that's okay. There's one, so I used the left hand edge, came down. I'm gonna use the right hand edge and bring it down as well. There we go. And again, this is all customizable. This is all just kind of me looking at reference photos and or using my own ideas to just kind of fill up the space however I want to. I'll do the same here again, although this will be mostly covered by the door. So if you want to be a little messier or quick, you can certainly do that. It's really only the bottom part you'll see here. Straight down, or maybe you're leaving no door on it somehow. Maybe it's swinging to the outside. You can always take your time and Keep it a little more open in here. But yeah, same same thing. You can see again, it overlapped a bit. I'm not too worried because the door will be there. And there we go. Cool. Yeah, I'm really only worried about that bottom part. Bow, 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 bow. Ba -na -na -na, bow, bow. What else can we do? We have a little bit of a line on the very bottom. I pointed out, but I'll point again. Right here, going along the bottom edge. Faceboard type stuff. Across. Again, if it's too cluttered, like maybe you feel like that doesn't fit very well, don't don't add it. You don't need to add it. You can add something else if you want to, or make it thicker if you want to. It's really all up to you. And yes, I go all the way across. What else? It looks like, yeah, I have the little triangle curves, I guess. So just to kind of fill in these little spots here with a little more detail. I'm using my brush 
and I just like to create. So again, I'm leaving a little bit of a gap, so I'm not leaving it super tight. I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a gap. I'm gonna do an L shape, so up and down, left and right. And then I'm just going to frame around the round circle here, just doing a nice curve. Again, keeping the same distance gap wise. Do the same thing over here, backwards L, so up and down, left and right. And then doing a little curve to connect. So yeah, get creative again, do any designs you want. I'm just kind of filling the space however I want to so there's not too much beige hanging out. Don't want too much of it. Now, yeah, I'm missing my usual small brush. I don't know where the heck that is. I'll just use, I'll just use a medium one, I guess. I'll just leave a minute in case anyone's adding the trim, just so you can see the trim kind of plain for now. What I'm doing is I'm just prepping a smaller brush so I can get some little designs in these little gaps that I've left here. Again, up to you if you want to leave them blank, that's totally fine, or add your own design. But I'm doing this kind of like swirly S-shape design going all the way down, so that's what I'm prepping for. I'm just using a small brush, I'm using the same paint I've been using, so that kind of like medium brown color. Uh, yeah, and I describe these as like curly S-shapes. I'll kind of zoom in here. <laughs> Not on Gandalf, thanks for later. Here's a nice zoom up of the two patterns here. So I start with a regular S shape that's just a little swirly. So it kind of curves around, curls around as a nice elongated S shape. It goes nice and tall and then curls around. And then if you can manage, just do the opposite of that. So you're curling around the other way, coming down and then curling around the opposite side to end. So I'm just gonna keep it, I'll zoom out a teeny bit more. So I want to keep it nice and big so you can really see the design. If you want to just look at those two, it's just that pattern repeated a bunch. So I'm going to go ahead and add it here. So again, I'm using a small brush. So curly S. And then I'm going to curl the other way. It's the other way that always gets me. I need to look at the reference. There we go. Curl around, down. Yeah, so just a nice little easy way to uh, fill up that space, just doing some nice little curvies. There we go. And yeah, I would just do as many as can fit. You'll probably have a different number than me, so don't worry if you don't have exactly six or eight or however many I have on my original. One, two, three, four, five. I, I fit seven. I fit seven, so don't worry about that. Just do whatever works for yours. Man, when I was creating this original design, I was having trouble with these. For those who watched me on Twitch doing it, I was like playing on my hand and trying to get a little fancy design going. I could not figure it out for a long time. I finally got it. There we go, so that's one. Look, I wonder what other frames would fit this view. Maybe an inside of this. Oh yeah, spaceship. Any like round hole. So like looking out of a um, like a boat, for example, kind of at the hall. That would be very cool. Yeah, I'm sure you could do even like if you did a kind of window frame like this. That would be cool as well. <gasps> Lady Galaga's here. Oh my gosh. Linda Lou, thank you. Watching tonight. No worries. Fancy S. Lady Galaga, welcome into you and your crew. Hype, yeah, big hype for Lady Galaga and her friends. Uh, Lady Galaga, I'm in the middle of a tutorial, as I'm sure you see here, so I don't usually um, do like a huge showcase of your channel and stuff, but I'd love to shout you out. Um, so for those who don't know, Lady Galaga actually does paint alongs with Bob Ross tutorials. Um, so if you like painting along to Bob Ross, Lady Galaga is actually a certified Bob Ross instructor. Um, so she kind of recreates, I believe, right? You kind of teach as you go, right? You're kind of talking about what you're doing and kind of switching things up as you go. 
yeah, would love to shout you out. And if you have any other links you want me to post, I'm so, so down. I just can't change my screen a whole lot because of the teaching. But I appreciate you and your tribe coming in here. But yeah, please check her out if anyone's interested in that. Exactly, she says, yes. She goes through it herself against certified Bob Ross instructor. I'm just so impressed by that title. Honestly, I'm like, oh, I want to too. <laughs> I need to get to Florida. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she goes through his uh, tutorials and uh, recreates them. So check her out if you haven't, please. Thank you again for choosing us to raid today. Hello, it is I, your fave pleb. I have come uh, to bless you with a pun. Oh, thank you. We have a pleb in chat, but now we have the fave pleb. Uh-oh, pleb. <laughs> You're being battled. What's up? And Trav, welcome in. Hello. Uh, someone threw a bottle of omega-3 pills at my head. I'm okay, though. My injuries are uh, super fish oil. Very good. Superficial. Superficial. Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> okay, pleb. What? <laughs> if anyone is a musician and does uh, treble clefs as a decor and cello propped up in the doorway, it would look fab. These are kind of like, yeah, they're kind of, they're almost, I used to be able to do treble. Oh, it's like the loop and then it, it crosses over at one point, right? I used to. <laughs> I used to be in music poppy. I used to know this stuff. I don't know anymore. I remember having so much trouble making those though. <laughs> That's a cute little feature idea though. Warm sunny Florida. Yeah, I'll just post my Insta and they can check. Oh, of course. Uh, so actually it will be blocked. If you want to um, whisper me, totally happy to. We block the links in chat just because of spams and stuff. So uh, I'll keep my whispers open if you're able to whisper me or another mod. Um, Gray is here, Grok is here. I saw Mystic Doe here. I saw CJ here, Christmas Jones. Um, yes, many mods or myself. I'm, that's honestly no worries. I've got my whispers open right now. Uh, everyone else, I'm just adding a few little S shapes to the bottom of this part. Cause again, we're going to be covering it with a door. So I'm not going to worry about doing all the fancy S's and then all of a sudden it's all covered. So maybe I'll do one at the bottom, one at the top. I gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. All right. If anyone wants to check out Lady Galaga's Insta, Please do. I don't think I have, so I'm going to save that for later. There you are. Beautiful work. Yep, she's got a lot of the Bob Ross recreations up. <laughs> he got some space kitties, I see. <laughs> some laser cats. I love that. <laughs> Painted some pumpkins. Check out her Insta if you're interested, everybody. Beautiful. Oh, the Northern Lights one is so nice. You rock the mountains. Oh, I'm excited to try some mountains tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you again for understanding. I, I usually like to do a whole spiel and like showcase of Insta, but just because of the tutorial, I'm uh, avoiding it. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, and if there's anything else you want to shout out, please let me know. I'm so down. Uh, oh, I didn't get it. It was a pun. That didn't actually happen. Oh. <laughs> Response to you is what you used to make a tree fall. A saw, dude. Wait, what? <laughs> Saw, dude. I don't get that one, Pleb. Sorry, that one went over my head. You guys had to trace them? Ah, I see. Yeah, it took a lot. Like, uh, we were, like, tested on how to make them, right? And I was always, like, <laughs> doodling them, and I could never get it right. Face clef was easy. Treble was difficult. We can have a hob uh, hobby hobbit series. Music, food, pet llamas out of the field. The possibilities. <laughs> hobby hobbit. That's great. I have to move on. Thank you uh, for coming out tonight. You've been an amazing audience. Please stay safe. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Plug. Maybe we'll see you around. Maybe not. Enjoy the puns of Twitch. Be gone. <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy your route. Thank you so much for popping in. Ladies are not coming out of the cat's eyes. Thumbs down. Oh, <laughs> it's more of that classic 90s background. I know the vibe she's going for. I told my people you were doing the Bob Ross. Oh, yeah, really. Thank you. Katie, thank you for the follow. Oh, excellent. I'm so glad you'll be there, Lady Galaga. That's gonna be my first time doing that. Um, I'm not really teaching people. I'm just kind of like following along myself. And uh, you know, if people wanna follow along too, cool. And I'm actually doing it at acrylics. I don't know if you knew that. Um, so that's gonna be kind of a different twist as well. Yeah, lots of different changes. And again, I've watched them all my life and I've never followed along. So I'm really, really excited, especially now that I see you do it too. It's like, it's doable. We can do it. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. <laughs> okay, everyone, I'm just going to zoom you out here. We don't have too many steps left. We got a nice big door. And of course, we got little Gandalf running in on his little horse and buggy. So let's get the door done first. That way we can kind of let it dry a little bit before adding our little golden knob. 
we'll go to the silhouette and then we'll add the gold knob and I also have some vertical strokes in here. So I'm going back to the medium round brush or just any brush you're comfortable with for this door. I'm using mostly blue with a little bit of yellow now and that's what's going to turn this kind of green into more of an emerald green is more blue, less yellow. You can even add a tiny bit of white to it just to brighten it a little bit so it's not totally blue. But yeah, mostly blue, little bit of yellow for this green. Or again, switch the door color. I know there were a couple different references with different door colors. I thought green was the most kind of, uh, most common one, most iconic door. Ooh, I'm nervous this isn't coming out. Don't splatter all over me, phthalo blue. Out. I've had it happen before. There we go. Perfect. Blue. We got some yellow. So mostly blue, a little bit of yellow, and I would even add a little bit of white in there just to brighten it a little bit. You can see the emerald color come through a little bit more without lightening it too much. Still want the door nice and dark though, in my opinion. Again, your choice for door color. I was just trying to match it to what I saw mostly. So I had a nice kind of like jewel tone green, emerald green. In the Holiday Hobbit home series, there can be <laughs> for sure be decorations on the door too, like a string of bells. Oh, you're so full of ideas, winter holidays. Cards taped out, oh, I love that. Cards inside the home, yup. Yeah, you could even just like hang little decor items like around here. So good. Full of ideas. I love it. All right. So for the door, everybody, I want you to note kind of what's going on here. So when it swings open, it's kind of like this inside edge overlaps a little bit. And then when it swings back, it's going to kind of stick in right there. So it's not actually hanging over here. It actually overlaps a little bit, right? So don't be afraid to overlap just a touch. Um, and I also made the height, um, I guess parallel to the inside of the frame. So this is like the trim of the door. We want the height um, of the doorway to be kind of matching the bottom part of the top of the frame here and the top part of the bottom of the frame here. So same thing, if you wanna use some little markings, you can for sure do that. Maybe like right here, bring it across right here. If you wanna mark the edge of the door, you can, the edge of the door here, whatever works for you but it's essentially a very, very skinny oval. Very skinny oval, because again, it's like propped open. So we're not seeing the full circle. We're seeing it kind of at an angle. So it looks like an oval. Uh, my door kind of hangs off the left, so it's not going to quite make it. It's going to be a little bit off on the left here. So it kind of like falls off. So I'm just doing a nice curve out to the outside here. Going to do a nice curve in. And again, very rough to begin with, and I'll kind of like clean it up as I go. There we go. Oof, that was a little rough. I'm going to fix that up. So this is very straight. I'm just going to keep curving it and kind of playing around until I have the oval shape that I like. But yeah, essentially a very like quick curve on the top, quick curve on the bottom, and then very like casual elongated curves on the edges. And you can of course fill it in whenever you're ready. Sometimes I just like to outline it until I have it all shaped up. See, it's a little straight here. I'm just gonna keep Keep curving around, keep curving until I get the shape I want. I have ideas, but can't bring them to life myself or what they are in my brain. Could have a nice little fire pit outdoors in the summertime with fireflies, that's so cute. I had all summer to make summer paintings, Poppy, and now I'm like, I have so many summer ideas, like camping things and yeah, like fireflies by a campfire would be so cute. We did do a campfire painting, but it was like a small little campfire. I wanna do like a nice close up one. Yeah, and sometimes everyone filling it in helps you see the shape a little better. So if you're kind of wondering what needs to be fixed, try filling it in and that might help you see the shape as a whole a little bit better. So try that if you're struggling a bit. 
because yeah you can see now it looks a little straight here so I'm just gonna maybe bring the curve out a little bit more abruptly on that side and then bring it back in just little bits at a time that's all you need but yeah Poppy I get you it's a little hard sometimes for me too that's why I use references so much because I, I really have a tough time kind of even really visualizing like you at least have the ideas I don't even <laughs> I feel like sometimes I don't have the ideas I just have like the concepts and then I need to look up you know shapes and color schemes and then put them all together myself so at least you got some ideas have you done a close-up of candle no I love candles they are equivalent to having a pet made uh, pet made of fire <laughs> that's a concept that's my little pet of fire <laughs> I love that uh, no I haven't we keep talking about doing some sort of like a cozy painting and I could totally see a nice close-up candle and a cozy painting. Uh, doing like a stack of books and a cup of tea. I know Jen was kind of suggesting that a little bit earlier in the day. I think that would be a cute little one. Keep an eye on them. Yeah, true. <laughs> Gotta maintain them. <laughs> they might get into trouble if you leave them alone. Yep, yeah, that's true. <laughs> little fire pet. <laughs> Just imagining the little flame with a cute little face. Ooh, I'm an ooh, ooh flame. Yeah, yeah, I, I picture that part of a cozy painting. I almost added a candle to one of my fall paintings. I don't know if you saw the window um, with the little pie on the windowsill. I almost put a candle there and then I was like, pie though. <laughs> come on, come on. So I've got my door, everybody, and I want to add like one or two more details before I leave it to dry. Um, it's a little hard to see, but there is a darker trim around it just to make it look a little more three-dimensional. So see how I, on the left-hand side, excuse me, kind of stuck close on the top here and then curved, excuse me again, curved around uh, with a thick line here. Uh, it's just like a darker green that I'm kind of curving around with and then I curve around all the way to the bottom. So yeah, it's like you see the thickness of the door, right? All in here. We don't do it on the right-hand side, just the left-hand side. So all I do for that is I add a tiny bit of black to my existing green. So I have my emerald green, which I was just using. I added a tiny bit of black to it just to darken it up. And again, I'm just staying nice and thin at the top, but as I get more along the side, I'm thickening just by pressing a little harder on my brush so it winds the bristles. Again, I know this is a little hard to see, but it is supposed to be subtle, so that's why. You'll be able to see it on your painting, I hope. Just a little extra black in the green and that gets a nice dark outline. And you're just curving it around the existing shape. I'm going right on top of the emerald green, by the way. You could, if you want, go around the outside, like create a new, new edge, but I think it's easier just to go on top of what you have, kind of keep the shape the way you want it. All right, so again, very subtle, but adds a nice three-dimensional look to the door. And with that same color, I like to just do a quick few uh, very thin kind of vertical lines. They don't have to be perfect all the way up and down. If anything, I like them a little bit split up. You can see I'm kind of doing like halfway and then maybe leaving a gap. Just gives it a little more of a like wood panel feel. So yeah, just using that color, dragging it down. It might mix a little with the emerald green because it's still wet. That's okay. Again, if anything, it kind of blends in a little bit, makes it a little more subtle and rustic. But yeah, just kind of chopped up. They don't need to be perfectly straight or perfectly thin all the way down. If anything, I just do very quick little lines. They're not all connected. There we go. Let's see if I can show you that a little closer up. Yeah, see that just peeking through there? Just makes it look, again, a little more like wood paneling there. Baby flame. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just read that, Poppy, but yeah. There's a, um... Who recommended that? There's a there's a cute Instagram account, and that's what they do. They'll create, like, they, they do digital art, and they'll do, like, a nice nature scene, and then maybe, like, on the rocks, they'll just put cute little faces on them, like little baby faces, like just dot dot, quick little U shape, like little uwu face. Or if they do like a tree, it'll, they'll put a little face on it. Anyway, just anything and everything. They put the cutest little face on it. 
It's all very whimsical and happy. I want everything to have that little face and this person has done it on their Instagram. So kudos to them. Follow them because you show- Oh yes, okay, okay, you know it, you know it, all right. Yes, I did, I guess. I <laughs> showed them on stream, I was so taken aback, I forgot. I remember someone recommended it in chat, but yes. <laughs> I'm so glad you follow them as well. <laughs> yeah, it may have been you, Alvin. That sounds about right. <laughs> it was so cute. Yeah, I follow them now and it makes me so happy when I see them post on Insta. I'm not on Insta a lot, like looking at what other people post, but whenever I see them, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go and zoom in now and do a little Gandalf here. Look at him go. Zoom it along. So yeah, basically what I'm trying to look at is just the top half of the horse and buggy here. Um, so I did just a quick little uh, top of the horse. Again, very, very quick and rough, honestly. You can see it's kind of like sketched out. I'll zoom in even more. You know, things like the reins are not even fully complete, just keeping it nice and thin. Uh, we have just like a general body shape here with the hat. The hat is the most iconic part, of course. Yeah, he's just zooming. Insert zoom and goes... Gave him a little pipe. Someone suggested a pipe, so that's actually in his mouth there. So yeah, you can customize your Gandalf to however you want. Make him zoom even further. Make his hat just whipping back. Whatever you think. But I'll take you through it step by step here. So I'm obviously using a nice teeny tiny brush. I'm not sure if it would be beneficial for me to zoom in or not. Maybe it would, so give me a quick second. I will zoom you in. Let's go right about there. Cool. Just a little closer. And I like to use a gray, actually. It's not pure black. I thought it would be a little harsh considering it's a little more in the distance. So I actually mixed black with a little bit of white in there. They are cute, Alvin. I think you did, they were tiny faces. Yeah, on mushrooms, exactly. It was all like very nature-esque stuff, yeah. And I think like cherries and things like that. Ryan, welcome back in, hello. Good morning to you, how was your sleep? But there's a cat in the buggy, ooh. Yeah, you can add your own, your own character, your own cat, whatever you want. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here. So first I'll start with the little buggy. Simply just a nice, uh, nice rectangle. Very tight, everything is very tight to the uh, hill. So we're not making full objects, we're making kind of the tops of them. So start with a little rectangle, just for our Gandalf friend to sit on here. And again, to scale, I'm making it pretty small, by the way. So this is zoomed up, remember, see how big my hands are? Still very small, so just remember he's in the distance. The hat fell off a few feet behind the zoom, yeah, for real. <laughs> Chaotic potato dealer vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, the potatoes are just bouncing out. It was good. I'm glad. How'd your day go? Uh, pretty okay, Ryan. Honestly, I ended stream a little early this uh, earlier today, but feeling okay now. I'm gonna stay on a little bit later to finish a tutorial painting live. So yeah, feeling all right. Thanks for asking. Okay, I've got my rectangle here. So let's make Gandalf kind of sitting here. So very basic shapes here. I'm just going to do a head for Gandalf. So I'll do a nice round circle and like all these shapes are about to be very much combined you can see we're not really going to see a head and a body and stuff it's all just kind of molding together but just so we can understand where things are we're going to do them shape by shape from the head i just kind of bring some brush strokes down so this is kind of like the uh, the torso here the top part of the body because he's kind of sitting on top of the wagon and then his legs kind of hang out down and out so I'm just doing a torso and then like I said I'm kind of bringing some legs out and it's all going to combine you're not really going to see the legs you're not going to see the arms or anything it all just kind of combines into one solid shape with the wagon so as long as you see the general body that's what we're looking for again I think the most iconic part or the most obvious part is the hat so this body is just kind of a blob And then for the hat, I wanted to make a nice big, big, big hat. So nice big brim kind of hanging off uh, the back a little bit. I kind of angle it like this. So coming from the top right to bottom left. And then I wanted it, yeah, kind of like zooming backwards here. So a nice wide bottom and then it kind of comes to a tip. It's kind of bendy. 
Again, everyone was joking when I made this that uh, his hat is very much, you know, floating away there. It's really, really blowing in the wind. He's just zooming away, so I'm gonna keep him the same. Gotta keep him now that he's done that. <laughs> I just thought I was trying to make a bendy hat. That was really all it is, but everyone said he's zooming away now. Uh, yeah, if you want to add any other features, like a little pipe, I just literally did a quick little line coming out here. I did not do any, like, pipe shape or anything. Um, I feel like I maybe tried to do a little bit of the hair coming out, you know, just a couple little brush strokes coming out on the back. So things like that. You can do whatever small little details you want. I'll just leave you for a quick second there as we're giving a quick minute for everybody. Zoom. I will do the horse shape next and then we will do the little reins coming out. So the horse, uh, again, just the top of a horse. So you don't need to worry about the whole entire horse shape. It's just the top part. I'm just leaving a little bit of, ga of a gap in between the horse and the wagon, horse and buggy. And for the horse, I kind of do a nice little curve upwards, it curves down a little bit, curves back up. So we're creating kind of the arch of the horse. So it goes up, down, up. And then I try to do like a little snout maybe showing before we go behind the hill again. So just kind of creating a nice little rounded head here. So coming back up for the head. And then doing a little snout just by using my brush and stroking a few times, kind of coming down and over and just leaving it right there. And then of course filling in the rest here. We want to fill in kind of right down to that hill. And yeah, you can just kind of judge from there and kind of reshape as you need to, maybe making the head a little taller. Of course, some little ears help with the horse look here. So I just add two little brush strokes for ears. And that's really all that's needed. Yeah, I would say a curve back. So up, down, up, doing the little snout here, some little ears. That's all I thought was needed. It would be cute to have bubbles floating up behind. Oh, but I can't think of who would leave bubbles in their wake. Hmm. Little bubbles. It's like Wizard of Oz, Glenda the Good Witch. She travels in a bubble. She doesn't really leave bubbles behind, does she? Hmm, who would leave bubbles? Someone soapy, who's very soapy? Mm -hmm. Who's clean? Who's clean leaving bubbles everywhere? <laughs> and then the last part is of course just adding some rain. So yeah, I didn't even do hands. I just kind of did very thin lines going anywhere close to the uh, horse's neck. And again, because it's so far away, if you have a little bit of breakage in those lines, that's okay. It just makes them appear a little bit thinner, right? So they don't need to be, um, yeah, perfectly straight, perfectly thin all the way. I just leave it like that. I'll give you a nice close up. It's going, whoa. <laughs> again, his, head, his hat is just blowing backwards. <laughs> cool. Oops, I'm going to adjust that just so you can see proportions again. second quick second we've only got one more quick step after this as well thunder becca thank you for the follow i'm just finishing up a step-by-step -step painting tutorial just so you know but come on in whoops i'll be painting a little after this too so good timing all right that's what it's looking like in total right you can see he's nice and small now whoops there he goes I may always scratch my head and my fitness tracker count as a gold medal. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you did it. So proud. You thinking, right? It's like, oh, you're a thinker scratching that head. <laughs> Ta-da! Gold medal. Accept it. All right, I'll zoom this guy out here. All right, last little step in my painting anyway, is this little doorknob. Again, if you want to customize and add more, you certainly can. I just wanted something to be able to grab onto on the door. So I did, um, he kind of looks like a squid in my opinion. That's kind of what I called him before. He's either a squid or a space invader if you were to flip him. <laughs> Oops, I shouldn't be doing this, but I just need to show you. Oops. 
He's a little squid. See him? A little jellyfish, I should say. Not really squid. He's more jellyfish-like. That's what he's like on the sign. Or on the side. Zoom zoom beach. Yup. <laughs> yeah, jellyfish. I should be saying jellyfish and not squid. I think that's much better. Anyway, think of him as that. If you're wondering how to do the shape, that's uh, really what I thought of. It was more of a jellyfish shape. So the color I use is a nice golden yellow. So that's going to be lots of yellow with just a tiny bit of red. And I would add a little bit of white in there as well. The white is going to make it a little more um, opaque on top of that dark green. I find yellow is just a very transparent color. So adding white to it really helps. Zach's here. Welcome in, Zach. Just finishing up our tutorial. But then I'm staying online for a little bit. So feel free to hang out. Welcome in. But yeah, jellyfish is correct, Ryan. I think that's what I was thinking of when I said squid five times. So again, that was lots of yellow, a little bit of red, a little bit of white to make it, uh, again, more opaque. And the red is to make it a little more golden shape. I'm just going right in the middle of the door. And it's a sideways jellyfish. So what I'm doing is a nice vertical line up and down. Doing a nice curve on the right hand side. It's like I'm making a D almost. A filled in D, capital letter D. Half circle, you could think of this as many things. So it's like a knob you can kind of grab onto. Yeah, Criffy, hello, I saw you earlier. Though I don't follow these tutorials, it is fun hearing how to mix. Yeah, of course. No, Ryan, I could totally understand that. Um, I've mentioned before that as a kid, I grew up watching Bob Ross. I didn't paint for a while. I just kind of liked listening to him and learning things and yeah, how to mix colors and why and exactly. If you ever choose to paint or decide you want to try it, maybe uh, you'll remember some of the stuff, you know, I think some of it does really stick. So who knows? Might come in handy. And if not, you can just still impress people with your knowledge. So there's my D shape and then all I do is I just do kind of two curved lines coming out from either side on the left hand side. So I guess coming uh, out and up on the top and then out and down on the bottom. That's more what I meant there. They're both on the left hand side but it just kind of pushes the knob out a little bit. But yeah, lots of shapes you can do for the little knob. You can add a knocker if you want. A little door knocker. Again, you, it's up to you to get kind of more detailed with it if you want to add more uh, more features to your home. Again, there's so much wall space. You can start to hang photos there and cards and lights, whatever you want. So that's the final step to this painting. Yay. So as always, I recommend signing your painting. If you haven't already, I'm just going to use that golden knob color and do a little EB Aaron bun in the corner. Cute. There we go. That's some decoration for my wall. Hee <laughs> hee. And uh, yeah, I'm fully free to answer any questions if anyone has them now, if anyone was struggling with anything or has any questions about anything at all, painting related, um, stream related, I'm more than happy to answer them now. Uh, before anyone disappears, I'll just kind of wrap things up by suggesting a few things. First of all, if you'd like to post any photos, I always encourage that. There's some information in the chat about photos right now. So I would say the most popular place to post for those wondering is Facebook. So I've got a link right there to the events. You can scroll down to uh, this event page, which is uh, dated for today. It features the painting in the, um, in the banner photo. I'm just gonna open it up for posting real quick because it is closed right now. Ad admin privileges only, let's fix that. And there we are. So that's updated so you can post in the Facebook event, you can post on Instagram and in our Discord, really anything you like. So feel free to choose whatever social media you prefer if you wanna show off your uh, beautiful uh, works of art to the public. And again, it's a good way to see everyone else's too. It's really fun to kind of see how everyone else handled the design, if they added anything, if they changed anything. So feel free just to check out those spots too, even if you just wanna see what's up. Thank you, Gray. Gray has put some information about tips. Um, I do accept tips. Thank you for those who do that. Um, they're always um, never expected. They're just always appreciated. I do these tutorials for free and have been for a while. Um, it's just a little something extra to show that you enjoyed and that you uh, continue to enjoy if you like to enjoy a lot of these tutorials. So thank you. Um, yeah, tips can be sent via Interact eTransfer to my fellow Canadians. It's a free service amongst banks. Uh, I also have a PayPal set up and there's also a Streamlabs link so that your tip can show up on stream. 
uh, it'll pop up with a little message and you can kind of say whatever you want and I'll shout you out and thank you. So just a fun little way to do that. And another way to, to support me is to subscribe. Thank you, Poppy. There's some prime information there. There's some subscription information there. Thank you, Gray and Poppy. Um, yeah, subscribing is essentially just like a monthly fee. You can pay it once for one month. You can pay it um, ongoing once a month, doesn't matter. Um, again, it's just a way to support me directly through Twitch. You pay a subscription to Twitch, I get a portion of that, and it just encourages me to keep streaming and it helps, uh, yeah, keep me alive and eating as I'm streaming for free here. Um, so those are ways to do that. If you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. You don't have to pay a cent. Uh, you have one free subscription per month if you have Amazon Prime already. So there's information on how to use that Amazon Prime subscription for free. Again, it's for free. <laughs> um, if you're interested in doing that, I can help walk you through it if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, check me out on all social medias if you want to check out my past tutorials. Thank you, Krithi. YouTube is there. Uh, Facebook is great for upcoming events. Discord as well. Um, Instagram is good for, uh, yeah, seeing all the photos from the uh, past tutorials. What else? What else? And then I guess if you want to support me in a free way, I keep saying it and I'll keep saying it more because it really is a huge, huge deal. Just watching me really, really helps. So if you want to just help me grow as a streamer and become supported with other uh, through other people, uh, just watching me. It really helps other people discover me on Twitch. There's a lot of other streamers who are always online. The more viewers I have, the more Twitch pushes me out to more people. It's a big cycle of just rediscovery that way. So if you do want to support me even throughout the week in between tutorials, I thank you very much. And you can just uh, just watch, just watch as I paint um, in between tutorials. I'm just uh, painting my own personal artwork. Um, I'm doing commissions. I'm doing, you know, things for upcoming tutorials. So you might be able to chat with me about what I'm making for an upcoming tutorial and give me some ideas. So feel free to check me out uh, anytime throughout the week. I always post my schedules on most of my social medias. So you can always do that. Um, just kind of look at my schedule or you can follow. If you follow me on my Twitch channel, you will be notified via email when I go online. So that's a good way to check me out as well. Um, something I think you might all be interested in. I'm doing a Bob Ross tutorial tomorrow. I'm painting along step by step to a Bob Ross tutorial, a full um, half hour of the joy of painting. I've chosen the episode. Uh, and I'll be starting that at about 11 a.m. EST, maybe a little bit after, just as I say my good mornings. Uh, but yeah, you can watch me do that step by step. You're welcome to join in with me. I've been encouraging everybody to get their stuff together if they want to paint along with me, but that's going to be something that's happening tomorrow. If you want to see me again tomorrow and support me that way, just watching, that's, uh, that's awesome. So yeah, lots of options for you there to support me. But again, most of all, I just appreciate you coming out tonight and I hope you had a good time. Thank you.